I want to do a quick video on a nitrogenous base and what the two types that it comes in, which are purines and pyrimidines. A purine will have a six-member ring attached to a five-member ring, whereas a pyrimidine will only have the six-member ring. So just a little drawing here to depict that. If we just have one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. And on this side, one, oh, do this in red here. One, two, three, four, five, six, like that there. So we're gonna look at the two different types of purines first, which are adenine, adenine and guanine. So if we just draw right here, our six member ring and our five member ring, which we will label each one of these as the one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, eight, nine, right there. And the adenine group, the difference, or the thing that you can, if you're looking at a molecule, you can tell that it's an adenine group based on the, uh, the amine, which is an NH2 on top. And then if we're looking at a guanine, see same numbering on this one but the difference is a double bonded oxygen here and a NH2 on the two primed carbon so if I do just do a little introduction here on the basic structure so if we're looking at this structure again I'm just going to enlarge it um, without it being an amine or a guanine just to show what each one of these is. This is a CH, this is a nitrogen, this is a carbon, carbon, CH, nitrogen, CH, nitrogen, and a NH here. So that's the basic structure, and then obviously the adenine and the guanine will change it up. This is just a nitrogenous base, and this is the adenine, and this is the guanine. So that is the purines, and now, to move on to the pyrimidines, I just think the pyrimidines is the longer name and it has the smaller molecule. That's just what my prof said, so that's kind of how I remembered it. So there are actually three types of pyrimidines, two which are used by DNA, and then one that is used only by RNA, and then it uses also the cytosine. So if we look at cytosine first, which is used uh, by DNA and RNA, we will draw our six ringed molecule here and so we will see let's label it too actually uh, one two three four five six and here we have a double bonded oxygen and on the cytosine we have an amine group on the top and right here is a ch ch an H and N and a C right there. So pretty much the same thing as you see on these molecules. Um, next we will look at a thymine which is only in DNA. So we have the same six ringed molecule and on this one we can see a double bonded oxygen is now on the four primed carbon and we have a methyl group right here, so a CH3, and we have the same characteristic double bonded oxygen right here. So, and actually on here we have an, uh, HN, an, an, an NH group on the, uh, on the three primed uh, nitrogen right there. So that's thymine, which is used only by DNA, and then we also have, I'm going to do this in a different color, um, uracil. So uracil is used only by RNA, and the reason being is because it's less stable. So RNA doesn't really need to be long-lived. It's a pretty short-lived molecule, where its DNA needs to live in our cells for quite some time, so we don't want our DNA to be unstable. And here we have a double-bonded oxygen and another double-bonded oxygen right there. And the difference is 
the only difference between thymine and uracil is that there is no methyl group. So taking away the methyl group is actually what makes this molecule so unstable. And yeah, so that, that, that is why uracil is used in RNA and plus it is easily uh, replaced and, and uh, the reason uracil is made instead of cytosine is because you wouldn't be able to, the molecule wouldn't be able to tell the difference between a mutated cytosine and a uracil, whereas thymine, it can tell the difference and it won't incorporate, uh, DNA won't incorporate uracil into the molecule instead of uh, cytosine by accident.